Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Terry Ann Hyman here on behalf of the Healers Play Group. Wanted to welcome you all today. It is going to be September tomorrow. So back to school. I mean, back to the play group. Such a great group of people. We welcome each and every one. Experience, no experience, really just interested in learning more about energy medicine, all the many uh, techniques and modalities. We really welcome each and every one. I know for myself, the Healers Play Group has a lot of fun people to connect with. It's a great group to practice with. Many of us have studied through the work of Cindy Dale, so we're kind of friends there. And then many of us are just coming in now, searching and seeking and wanting to know more. So I'm really grateful to be here today and to really kind of open up our new season. We take a break in the summer, get outside, and now fall, we start to bring the energy in. And opening up our season this year, I have a really great dear friend, mentor, friend, podcast mentor. I don't know. I love Tina to death, is Tina Conroy. And she's starting us out talking about mediumship and connecting with the other side, the life thereafter, those that have passed. Really, truthfully, she's going to really, really help educate us on what mediumship is all about because there are a lot of facets. And I know a lot of people have some myths of what it is. But before I bring Tina on, I just wanted to talk a little bit about her and give you her bio. She is an awesome, awesome woman. I knew her, met her originally when I lived in New York, up in Port Washington. She came in as a student of mine, and I have to say she has gone on and on and on and on, does amazing work, teaches so many people, Reiki energy. She works with them as a spiritual mentor. She's a psychic medium. And if I go through her pod, her bio, this is what we talk about when we talk about Tina. Since childhood, Tina knew she was connected to something greater. At an early age, she realized she had inherited her psychic grandmother's gifts, visions that were always vivid, full of sensory detail, and eventually real. Since then, Tina has spent over 20 years attuning her mind and body to truly listen to that internal voice that can predict or advise, and that is inspired by a greater power. Tina helps others to strengthen their inner voice by improving mental and physical health to synchronize the mind-body connection. As a Reiki energy healer and psychic medium, as a Reiki energy teacher, Reiki master teacher and psychic medium, she hosts the Intuitive Woman podcast, such a great podcast, a weekly podcast where she guides meditations and interviews spiritual influencers. Her passion is to work with people, women, to develop their intuition, connect with their inner guidance, and create a passionate spiritual life. So much goes on with Tina. She's a really fun. Her Intuitive Woman podcast is great. She has an Intuitive Woman group on Facebook. And like I said, we have known each other for many, many years. So I'm so excited to bring Tina on. I'm gonna bring her on. There she is. Welcome, T. Oh, Terry, it is always such a pleasure to be with you. It is. It's so much fun, Tina. We both have grown so much in our work. And I think that's a really good thing for people to understand. You know, I mean, I remember the first time we went to, you know, Doreen Virtue's group and learned all about Claire's, right? And started doing readings, right? And to continue training and learning and really finding that field, that path that really inspires us is so important. And I've watched you grow year after year. I remember seeing this for you, like she's going to do this, be up on a stage in front of lots of people. So it is really, really exciting to see that growth and to have you start off our fall with your work. Definitely. So I wanted to kind of just kind of start to ask questions. And if anybody's out there listening, I see we have a couple of people coming on. If you have questions about the class, what you want to do, go ahead and post your questions and we'll do it. Sometimes with StreamYard, we can't quite see who it is. So maybe you'll just add your name in there as well as you post a comment. Or if you're catching the replay, of course, hashtag replay. We love to do that. So Tina, the group class that you're teaching, I guess we call them play groups, is all about mediumship. What does that really mean to you? What is that terminology and mediumship that you like to talk about? Absolutely. So I think it can be very, I'm, I like that we're starting with that. Thank you for asking me that question because I think it can be very confusing and also there's lots of different terminology there. I, my, from my experience, there are two ways of thinking, right? There is mediumship is connecting truly to the other side, the discarnate souls, people that have passed over the afterlife. And then there's also mediumship that connects to uh, spirit guides, masters, guardians, and so forth. I believe it's both. 
I believe it's both. I believe if you take down the word medium, it's a go-between. Yes. And that is, that is, that is what I am. And that's, that is what I do. So it's the calling, the connecting, the conversation, the communicating with the other side, discarnate souls. And for me also spirit guides, masters, guardians, angels. Um, so I, I kind of have both of that. And some mediums will only say I, a medium truly is past loved ones, people that have crossed over, that have lived on this earth. I, I believe it's both. And that's how I, I go by my work. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think for a long time, I held the view that it was just for those that have passed over. And I know lots of times in my sessions, I'll bring that in, but I'm like, oh, that's not my path. But on the other hand, as I studied and did a lot more work in energy medicine, you know, that kind of the idea of the channel, the medium, and I agree with you, like we're in between those dimensions, bringing the messages through. You know, and so I definitely agree, whether you're connecting with a past one that's crossed over, whether you're connecting with spirit guides, bringing messages, you're still that medium. So I totally agree with that. And thanks for that clarification, because sometimes, you know, people are not very sure of what that is. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So in the class, you're going to give an overview. And if I wondered if I could just ask you a few questions about that, like what is some of the terminology? Sometimes we hear like sitter and being the medium and being the reedy. What are some of the terminologies and what does that mean that you work with? Sure. So the sitter, I'll start there. A lot of people may or may not hear that term. If you come for a reading, uh, a mediumship or a psychic reading, the terminology is the sitter or the sitter. So you're sitting for a reading. So you might hear that terminology a lot, I, I'm the sitter. And then the person giving the reading would be the medium or, or and or the psychic. I, I am both, I'm a psychic medium. This class is going to, you know, there's always an overlap, but I'll be speaking more about mediumship, but I am both a psychic and a medium. And I can discuss the both if you'd like. And, but a sitter, the terminology of a sitter is someone that goes for a reading, someone that sits, and listens and receives the reading, receives the information. So a, a live person sitting. Um, the another terminology which I think is important that I use a lot and a lot of my colleagues use a lot is spirit. And so, you know, spirit, there are many ways that I might term out, like have a terminology of spirit. I believe we have our own spirit. You talk a lot about that, Terry. So we have our own spirit and who we are and our connection. But when I'm connecting to someone's past loved one, I'll say spirit or spirit world. Um, sometimes I might even say communicator. So there's a lot of terminology, spirit. I'm connecting to spirit. I'm connecting to a communicator. And, and I'll be clear with my sitter and say, I'm connecting with spirit. I'm connecting with your mother, your father, or we'll, we'll try to decipher who that person is and a little bit of charade. Charades, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> what does that mean? Charades, good word. Oh. You're like, sounds like, you know, <laughs> sounds like, right. And so, yeah. this is my again from my experience. So, from my experience, is our loved ones are always around us, and quite frankly, you don't need me or you don't need any any other medium. Um, <coughs> always with us. They are always around us, and it's they always want to communicate. They are communicating with us in one shape or form. Uh, sometimes they might be communicating again in signs and dreams, and, and there's so many different ways, songs, you know, pennies, you know, butterflies, all the things that you hear. And yes, that is all true. And so my job as the medium is to, and I'm a mental medium, so I guess I should speak about that too, because there are different types of medium and I'll get into that. But my job as a medium is to connect with spirit, connect with a loved one in spirit, I may not always connect with the person you want, your star attraction, but I'll do my best to connect with your loved one in spirit. And then for me to communicate what they're saying to me and then give you the message. Um, and it may not just be the message, you know, it could be, this is a particular person. So what I find is, and I truly believe this, and there's a lot of, uh, I would say, myths around this, is that they're always there, but I think of it like this. I was I had a beautiful mentor. Um, I worked with Medium Floor, who's a beautiful medium. She's in Portugal. I did a uh, mentorship with her. And she just described this so perfectly. And I'm going to use this. This is from her, not from me. Spirit World say it's like a radio station. So Spirit World is at 97.5. And I'm at like 97.2. And I got to kind of find my frequency and tune in 
to hear what that person is saying, spirit, and then take that information, put myself out of the way, the Tina brain, and then deliver it. And so what happens there, remember, it's a, it's a three, almost like a three-way communication. I have to step out of the way and really give what I get. So that's another big terminology. If anyone's developing, give what you get. Because what happens is I may hear something that's so obscure or so strange or, or something that didn't really come from me. I'm hearing it and then I'm delivering it. So my job isn't that they're not there. I believe they're <coughs> there. My job is to, to kind of find that frequency. And, and so it's not, people will say, well, maybe my mom's not there anymore, or maybe my dad's not there anymore. No, they're there. My job is to deliver that. And it doesn't mean they're not there. It's just that for whatever reason and for whatever day, I may not have that right connection. Um, I think also, you know, we see so much now in media and TV and social, I call it the social media mediums, you know, and it doesn't always work like that. You know, Terry, I know you may want to connect with your mom or your dad. And, and I would love to say I have mom right here, but, but I still have to connect with that. So hopefully I do get to mom or dad, but there may be a whole bunch of people that are there before mom and dad, or I may not be able to tune in, but mom is there. It's just my job to connect to her. Yeah. I love that idea. Now you also use the word gallery a lot. What does that mean? So the, a gallery or a live reading or a gallery, now it's changed because you could do a live gallery, a live gallery reading. Uh, it's also called a DEM, which is short for demonstration. And so mediumship goes back to really the roots of spiritualism. And spiritualism is still alive and well today. It's a religion. It's considered a religion. And spiritualism in the church of spiritualism is they have service. I've been to one, so I can actually say it. It was beautiful, quite beautiful when I went to Lilydale not that long ago. And they have a beautiful service. They even do healing. They kind of, they pause and then everybody does healing. The healers come out and they go on healing benches and they get healing if you'd like, hands on healing. And then at the end of the service, right at the end, a medium will give up and deliver messages. And so that's what's called now a DEM. It's been shortened or a demonstration. If you're not in a, if you're not in that spiritualism group and you go and do a event, a gallery, and I've done some in person or Zoom, it's people are coming and you're standing and you're delivering messages. Now that gets into another terminology. There's indirect and there's direct. So if I had 50 people on Zoom or 50 people sitting in chairs, if I was going indirect, I'm gonna tune into who the information that I'm getting. And then I have to find that person, find the communicator. So here the communicator, you know, it's it's a little confusing, right? Find the communicator that's speaking to me. Okay, I have a man here. He's presenting himself I'm in his 40s. He's got dark hair. Um, he has weathered hands, so forth and so on. And then I would say to the to the group, who here can who here can recognize this man? That, that would be the terminology. Who here can recognize this man? Now, you may have five hands go up. You may have one hand up. You may have no hands up. And so what happens is if there's the five hands, I need to go over the information, go to each person, and then find what fits. And this is sort of the, the play of game. There may be no hands because I also what happens is, one, I could be wrong, but I do have spirit here. And the Someone sitting in the audience may, I find this a lot, one may not want to say because they're embarrassed. Mm -hmm. One, they have now amnesia. I mean, how many times, like, I've gotten a reading and I'm going, no, no, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was my father-in-law. So yeah. we forget because, you know, we're, we, we're thinking we're going to hear from one particular person. So a gallery, again, is a group event. It's a demonstration or now called a dem, a gallery or a dem. You can hear them different words. That's awesome. So you've shared so much information. My goodness. So now in the class... You're going to go over this information as well. Are you going to have um, exercises? Are you going to do any readings? How are we going to how are we going to be able to participate in this? My thought is that I will put everybody into a meditation uh, slash sitting in the power, and I'll explain what sitting in the power is. Connect to our own energy, and it's something that mediums do regularly. Uh, some do more than others, and then give some exercises to connect to your own loved ones, because that is probably the best connection, you know your loved ones the best. And also I would love to do a short demonstration depending on how many people are there. I probably will go indirect and see uh, who comes through and just give some information and, and, and kind of go through that and, and see who steps forward. 
Ooh, that sounds a lot. That yeah. sounds fun. Yeah. Like you know, giving everybody the opportunity. I love yeah. the idea of sitting in the power. Yeah. What does yeah. that mean? So sitting in the power is a uh, terminology and, you know, I will always say it's very similar to meditation, although let's say it's not meditation, um, but it is sitting each day or regularly and really knowing where your energy is and where your energy begins and where your energy stops. And the reason for that is when you're connected to sitting in the power, you know your own energy. When spirit comes forward, everyone's a little different. So for spirit for me always comes in on my, um, this is my left side. So spirit always comes in on my left side. I kind of guide them in. And over the years of training, I'll have them move over to the left and kind of step back and forward. I'm doing this all in my mind, by the way. It's not like I see them. I think that's another big thing. People think they're standing right there in the room. And so because I've done a lot of sitting the power and I'm, and I'm always developing, by the way. So I think that's for everybody. I feel like a pressure pulling in on me. I, I have like a feeling of this. And that's over years of developing. And so sitting in the power is is just that you're not really trying to connect with spirit that's another thing that's called sitting there's a they're sitting in the in power and then there's also um then there's all sitting for spirit so sitting for spirit is connecting and saying okay who's around me and can i connect to them or you might put yourself in a in a um in a scene in your mind and like you know sit down and, and ask spirit to sit next to you that's hmm. sitting for spirit but this is sitting in the power so sitting the power is is similar to a meditation, I would say. Very cool. Yeah. So now one other thing that just came up as you were talking, like, does do people need to have like know what their clairs are, know what their intuition is all about? Do they need to have that experience or can they come and still just tune in? No, I, I really feel that this class will take them wherever they are. And I feel like if they're interested enough, that that's that's the green light. That if you're interested. If this is something that's calling to you, come. You don't need to have any experience at all. You don't have to be a medium or, or not. I believe everybody is a medium, by the way. We're all mediums. I agree, yeah. We're all intuitive. And I have seen this more and more. And so, I, I you know, we, we speak about, you know, a born medium or not a born medium, but we're all born a medium. We all can connect. It's just allowing ourselves to have that connection to, to, yeah. to that. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that, you know, I think you've demonstrated that really well as I've watched you grow through the years, right? From where we first started, right? Reading angel cards, right? That kind of thing. But I have seen you grow and I've seen, I think the, I think really it's like putting priority. Like I want to train, I want to learn, I want to practice and stepping up to the plate and doing it. And I've seen you do it. So I think that's important for people to hear. Like, it's like, oh no, I can't do it. I think we all can train and maybe you do have a gift for it. I know I have several clients that have this and they're just now opening up to it. And so it is important that people, you know, can learn how to do this, you know, for sure. Yeah. yeah so really we do have some comments. Yeah. Deanna said, interesting that we are all mediums, right? I think that that is really important that we do recognize that. Yeah, for sure. Correct. Oh, right. Ellen is here too. Ellen, are you Hi, been Ellen. in our thoughts? Hello. Yes, I hope you're doing better. I hope you are. I see your post and I see that you are able to post and get outside for sure. Definitely. Good to see you here. And so, yeah, Deanna, we are all mediums and I do agree with that. And I think it is how we train and how we want to work with our energy and who the connections are. You know, I just did a podcast last week on, um, or maybe two weeks ago, on spirit guides. And she was saying the same idea. Like, you could be a medium and bring in spirit guides and really connect that way and really create those relationships. So it may not, as Tina was saying, necessarily be that you want to bring in messages from deceased loved ones, but maybe you do. You know, I have a recent client I'm working with now, and she was in a house, and the the mother, you know, kept coming forward. And so sh this was brand new to her. Right. And so we can either be afraid of it or we can embrace it and learn more about it. And I think that's really where we're all where we're at with all of this is to learn more and to really train and put a time and attention. And I think like you also mentioned, too, it's like sitting in the power or sitting in meditation. We still know how good that feels. Right. It's like, right. yes, to be in that meditative state for sure. Yeah. So what else? What else? Let's see. Um, what's the objective? So, you know, the intention, again, is to bring, 
For me, it's really sharing what mediumship is. And so in this class, you know, there's only so much I can go through in those 90 minutes. And there's, it's, it's something that really lights me up to, again, talk about terminology, to allow ourselves to be open to, to say to yourself, and I think this is a big thing is, and when you work with anything with, you know, intuition and mediumship and psychic, you know, these all kind of mold together, right? And I think that if you're open, again, is, you know, we can question everything. That's what we do. You know, we see that meme all the time when I use, when you see a sign, you know, it's like, I saw a sign, but I want to sign your sign. You know, I saw a butterfly, but maybe that wasn't a butterfly. I want to see three more butterflies, right? And I always say, I always say to myself, put that aside, right? Just put, just put all that aside and just allow it all in because why not? Let it all in because the minute you start doubting and doubting and doubting, you're going to keep yourself in that doubting. So just for the sake of learning and experiencing and growing, like you teach, Terry, is put all those doubts aside and welcome it all in. Yeah. Welcome it all in. And that's, that's a lot of it with the mediumship. It's doing, it's trusting, right? There's always going to be developing. I, I truly can sit here and say that everybody is a medium. Everybody, not everybody's going to want to do readings. Not everybody's going to want to put a shingle out, but we all have the ability to connect. We all have the ability to connect. And then it is work though. I mean, I think the other thing is we're learning more and more that there is a development path. I will always be developing. It's it's years of development and I'm never going to sit here, nor should anybody else and say, I got it. I, I'm good. You know, I'm always learning and I'm always learning from actually spirit world. They're, they're who's helping me. There are times in readings and I'm like, oh my goodness, that was something new. I didn't realize that. So there's always learning, there's always developing, and there's always growing. Yeah, and I think that growth helps you to learn more and more. I know when I was studying in the Akashic Records, you know, it was a couple of years of training and doing readings and readings and readings and readings, and all of my intuitive gifts just opened up. And really, I think it had to do with the trust. You see it, you say it. You see the message, you bring it in. I think that's part of it is trusting because we all get messages, but the chant, ah, oh, nah. Like you said, nah, not that. I have to tell you, in Vancouver, I was there last week, and I saw so many feathers. I brought home so many feathers. I had to keep laughing. Every time I stepped down, it was like another feather, another feather, another side. So I thought that was really funny. And we actually had someone, Linda, that was commenting, she sees 1111 and 444. So it's, it's really being in the awareness of energy and training yourself to trust that awareness of energy. And I think in the class, you're going to show us all of that. We'll get to experience it. We'll get to learn a little bit. And maybe there'll be a time for a demonstration. We'll see how the class goes. But yeah, so thank you so much for being with us today. Any final words? Any closing thoughts? Well, one, I just love being with you. And I'm really excited to kick off the fall season at, at, the, play, at the Healers Play Group. And so if anyone's on the fence, I would really say that if you're interested and there's, this is something that you're excited about or you're just, you know, what is that all about? That's your first, that's your first nudge. That's your first nudge from spirit to just learn a little bit more. We put our toe in, then we put our foot in. And again, this is for everybody. So you don't have to feel like you have to come with any, any experience, any knowledge. This may be the very first time that you've ever heard these terminology or what I'm going to speak about, or maybe you've done classes before, or maybe you're a practicing meeting medium. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, doing readings. So really all is welcome. And I'm really excited for uh, the 8th, uh, September 8th. And I'm, I'm, I'm just really grateful. Thank and yeah. grateful to you, Terry, for yeah for inviting me in. Yeah, it's so the class is September eighth, five thirty to eight thirty, I believe. The cost is only thirty five dollars, so it's definitely affordable. You will get a recording after to go back over it. You'll be able to ask questions. It is interactive. If you haven't been to one of our groups before, you know that we do. We chat, we ask questions, and a big shout out to Claire Nelligan because she's the one that kind of created the group, and she kind of runs the show, and she'll ask questions and she'll read the chat. So there is the opportunity to ask your questions, to ask your your understandings, and then the practice time is just so valuable right now. I think the more and more we practice, the better it will be. For sure. So the link is right there. Reach out if you have any trouble at all with the card and just let us know that you want to come and we would love to have you. There is a Facebook group. So if you're not watching this in the Facebook, we do have the Facebook group, Healers Play Group. And come. What better way to join in with other like-minded people and to really advance your skills? Yeah, for sure. So Tina, thank you so much. I'm so excited for the class and we'll see you next week to your thank spirit. You. To your spirit, Terry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.
All right. So definitely come check us out. It's a fun group. We'll have a great evening. It's next Thursday, next week. So you still have time to sign up. The link is in the show notes. We would love to have you. So just closing the energy, taking a nice deep inhale. I just offer gratitude. Gratitude for the practice, gratitude for this group, and gratitude for you showing up and watching us. So come join us to your spirit. Namaste.